this is our new set, and it's um, amazing. It's insane. It, it, it's it's absolutely wild. It's it's unreal. Like I I can't get over it. And I saw it for the first time yesterday, and I couldn't speak. I don't I don't. It's amazing. So we done glowed the fuck up for Cafe Three <laughs> in a big way. The audience is not ready for what they're going to see in this new circle with us. I mean, I don't, I'm not ready. I knew what was coming up, and I didn't understand until I sat down in the space and saw it. Just, let's go. <laughs> we knew going into this campaign that it had to be new and special and different, and we just wanted to push ourselves and push the boundaries. When I first had the idea, it was an art class in high school, and there was a project that was about kind of creating a, a multimedia experience. I had this, this idea of a room where instead of windows, there were LCD screens, you know, and light lighting setups that you could change at the press of a button on your computer, and what started as a project became this, like, white whale of mine, this thing that, like, maybe one day, and anybody who I could talk to about it that I know would maybe give a shit, I would. Probably the first five conversations we ever had, one of them was a drunken, you know what would be the best gaming room in the world if you could do all this? And yeah, that happened. <laughs> so. I think knowing the end goal of what we wanted to achieve, it kind of quickly informed us that we had to go pro from the beginning that that was gonna make our life so much easier if we just went to a professional concept artist out of the gate. I, I remember coming ac across Sean's work because I am a theme park nerd. We ended up going to a theme park professional, Sean Ellis, who you may have seen some of his Crit Roll Land fan artworks on the Twitters. He caught our, our attention. And it's because, while well, yes, he is a critter and a fan, he is a professional. He helps design theme parks for a living. And we reached out to him, had still some of our general ideas that we knew we wanted to achieve. And he helped us work up this concept of what we are now referring to as the Tavern of Tales. There were a lot of different iterations that I got to see, Some of, and a lot of it depended on the amount of space we had for, for this set and what kind of technology we were going to use and all the different ways we might be able to apply it. The attention to detail was still there, and there's things like I, the lanterns. I can't get over the lanterns. There is There are details in the lanterns that I don't think the rest of the cast has picked up on where I'm like, oh, oh, well done. <laughs> If Sean Ellis and what he was able to bring with his concept art was stage one, Holly Hodges, who is another theme park professional, she brought her team on board, and they were the ones who were able to tell us, okay, you want to utilize projection effects. Here's everything that you need. Here is a long list of equipment. The first time we really started dabbling on utilizing projectors on the set was with Taliesin's one-shot Shadow of the Crystal Palace. And I brought in a ton of uh, like weird practical effects and kept begging people to <laughs> please install this. I'm well aware this is a nightmare. I swear I know what I'm doing. And we got to we got to do a few of them. I thought they looked really good. What we really took away from that was that we knew if we were going to go hard on projection effects, we needed to design a set with that in mind from the beginning. And that kind of ended up being our jumping off point. That was stage two. Then it all started morphing into stage three, which was actually fabricating and building it. And for that, we just went back to our good old friends, Jeff and Joe over at Flip This Bitch, who have built many sets for us in the past. They always do phenomenal work, but I mean, they really went above and beyond with this one. I mean, everyone on that entire team, from their contractors to their woodworkers to their scenic designers, they pulled out all the stops. New campaign, new characters, new set. We gotta have a new table at that point. It just, you know, you gotta complete the package. I can personally say I've never seen a set do this because not only does it have to look good for the audience and everyone who's watching at home, it also had to look good for people who were sitting around the table. 
This set and everything that it can do, it's all a tool, and it's meant to enhance the expression of the story that we're all building together. Yeah, I, uh, I don't think they were expecting just really how, how extra that this set was going to be. <laughs> I felt like we had won, you know, some sort of prize or that it was a gift that she had, you know, made for us. This was just a warehouse. This was nothing in here. There was a break room over there with lockers and a dingy table. I walked in and instantly started it. And am I gonna do it again? That's dumb. Instantly started to cry. At the moment we realized, we, oh, we're back at the same table again. And then we all kind of just reach out and touch each other's hands again was more emotional than I think we were expecting. I can't believe this is where we get to, to work and to, to play. It's so unreal. <laughs> this whole room is unreal. <sighs> I'm excited. <laughs> And I think when we were able to bring the, the cast in and I was full on absorbing and, and feeding off of their energy and their reaction, I am just so excited to be able to sit and relax and get going again, start playing again. And so much effort has gone into what now looks effortless. And we're creators who are in charge of our own creation. That's really rare, rarer than this set. It's been crazy watching Marisha come over here, build a fantastic production team. And like any great leader, it was just also finding people that were insanely good at what they do, bringing them in, giving a guided vision for it all, and then helping execute that. Marisha is the youngest among us and is now also the, the most mature among us because she's been wrangling all this, all this stuff that we've been doing. Just so much love and effort <laughs> went into this and the emotional reaction of everybody. It just, it really did feel like such a gift. When you smash it out of the park like this, you just gotta celebrate that, right? And, and the team that made it happen. Where are we going to be sitting? I don't think we're ready to even figure that out yet. I threw it out there, because I was like, where are we sitting? Oh shit, are we calling dibs? Are we, are we calling dibs? I don't think so. I haven't heard anything about Colin Dibbs. I don't know how we're gonna figure out where we're sitting. Like, I don't like sitting on the end. I like having the end seat. I'm an aisle flyer. I don't I don't rock the window because I feel trapped. It's like dice in a Yahtzee canister and we're still kind of shaking it up and we're not entirely sure what's gonna pop out yet. I'll be next to anyone. I, uh, I, I wear deodorant, it'll be fine. Where we're sitting is the last thing to figure out. That'll be... 10 minutes before showtime. I'm, I'm kidding. I've really, I'll sit anywhere. I'm just gonna let that happen to me. I don't know, I'm fine with anything. I think everyone's starting to get ideas of where they want to sit, but I'm very much of the Godzilla level. Let them fight. All bets are off, bro. All bets are off. Campaign three, all bets are off. So what we led the pitch deck with. And you know what? Still true. <laughs>